I'm going to start with something I've been hearing a lot. It's called the Bangalore bubble. Rohan, as someone who's lived in Bangalore for so long and as the founder and CEO of a Bangalore startup, have you heard of this? Of course, I have thoughts, but you should describe it first. Okay, so here's a short version of this, okay? For a long time, most people agreed that if you wanted to start a tech company, the default place to do it was Bangalore. It had everything that young startups wanted, a vibrant city, access to tech talent, VCs and even great weather. For over a decade, some of the most notable startups have emerged from Bangalore. Everyone believed that this was an advantage because the ecosystem makes all of these companies stronger, resilient and more innovative. But of late, we aren't so sure if that's true. Even though most people in Bangalore believe that they're doing exciting, innovative work, it's the startups from another city that's really succeeding as businesses. And that's Delhi. For example, if you look at the list of tech startups that have gone public, they're all mostly Delhi startups. Paytm, Zomato, Delivery, Mama Earth, or even InfoEdge, Make My Trip, from an earlier era. Even anecdotally, there are enough people who believe that Bangalore startups have gone soft and have started believing that running a startup is more important than running successful businesses. Yes, and normally this would be fine. But we stand at a point where both of these worlds are going to clash into each other. Startups right now are in an age of scarcity. There's less funding going around, there's a limited base of paying customers, fewer investors and of course, limited talent. And right now, with Bangalore companies like Swiggy, Ola Electric and Flipkart and Inmobi set to go public over the next couple of years, they're going to be competing for the attention and money of public market investors. And right now, in all of these factors, it looks like Delhi's the one that's winning. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How Delhi tricked the Bangalore bubble. I'm your host, Praveen Gopal Krishna. And this is 2 by 2 a weekly business podcast from the Kens Newsroom, located at the intersection of curiosity and synthesis. We also like to call ourselves your personal investigative brain. Let's get started. I'm actually going to begin by reading something that I stumbled upon yesterday. Uh, it's an article from the New York Times. I know, the New York Times, but here it is. The title of this article is is the next Silicon Valley taking root in Bangalore? This is from March 2006, and I read out the first paragraph. Bangalore's flourishing outsourcing companies, including Infosys and Wipro, have attracted worldwide attention on their global clients and tens and thousands of workers. Less known are the many technology startups that have taken root here. The new firms are drawn by the region's big pool of engineering graduates, many of whom have expertise in esoteric new technologies. That advantage, coupled with labor costs, which are much lower than Silicon Valley, is starting to turn Bangalore, long a center for lower-end outsourcing services, into a center of high-end innovation. That was 2006. Uh, 15 years later, here's this article that I saw, which says, Delhi has become the startup capital of India, <laughs> outdoing Bangalore on a number of startups added since April 2019. Fake news. According to the Economic Survey 2022. So here's where we were. A long time back in 2004, 2005, everybody looked at it and said, Bangalore is going to be the next big thing. And it was for a while. Sometime later, 15 years later, it's, it suddenly looks like now it's Delhi. There has some kind of an inversion has happened. Bangalore was the promised land and now Delhi has come and taken it. Now, normally this is okay because it's all right. Different cities have different cultures. Different cities have different things that they bring to the table. But now we are in the situation where both of these worlds are starting to collide. First, there are a bunch of IPOs coming in 2024 and almost all of them are Bangalore-based tech companies. And I Finally. read out some of them. Finally. Finally. Finally, says Arnav. All right. Uh, and here they are. Swiggy um, is coming. Uh, Ola Electric is coming. Inmobi has announced that they would basically go for an IPO later. Flipkart has always been talking about an IPO, but looks like they're much more serious about it. PhonePay has done their flip all the way from Singapore back into India. And they are all coming up against Delhi companies who have done this earlier. Zomato, Paytm, InfoEdge, Make My Trip, Delivery, all of these companies went and did an IPO earlier and looks like these two are now 
going to start colliding with each other. The other reason why they're starting to collide with each other is because the market, as we are starting to realize, is more or less flat. So to talk about this, I have four people here today. Four people with very diverse and interesting experiences, not just in the kind of work that they do, that give this brilliant and interesting perspective on what we are trying to talk about, but also about their lives and their connections to Delhi and Bangalore. I'm going to start with Arnav. Arnav, tell us a little bit about yourself and specifically talk about your connection with Delhi and your connection with Bangalore. Before you begin, let me say that the reason you are here is because you have spent four years of your life after you graduated from engineering in Delhi and the last four years in Bangalore. As five and three. Five and three. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Hey, hi. Uh, thanks for having me here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the most uh, recent uh, three years have been in uh, Bangalore. Um, so, it's interesting. Yesterday, I had um, gone meeting a few folks and they were asking me the same thing, like, you know, uh, your journey so far. And I was like, there was an interesting thing that uh, it has been four major places I've been. It's been like building an edtech product. Mm. And then suddenly it felt like, okay, I need to do something at scale in uh, tech. Uh, and just serendipity happened, moved there. And this whole thing happened once in uh, Delhi. Hmm. And then this whole thing happened once in Bangalore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for our listeners, uh, Arnav graduated from the Delhi College of Engineering. He spent four years doing tech and entrepreneurship in Delhi. He used to work at uh, Zomato. He had founded this company called Coding Blocks, which he talked about just now. And for the last three years or so, he's been in Bangalore. Uh, at Scalar, and right now he is one of the engineering leads at Geo Cinema. Welcome to the show, Arnav. And we are going to listen to you and get your views about the differences between Delhi and Bangalore because you have spent time in both places. Sure. My second guest is someone for whom this is completely different because he spent nearly 20 years in Delhi. He is one of the co founders of this community called Mobile Monday, which I checked on LinkedIn has been around since 2007. And for those 20 years he's been there, he's developed a very active mobile community there. He's worked in a set of Delhi companies. He's worked at Paytm, he's worked at Apple, he's worked at Spice Labs. But somehow, for some reason, three years back, he's moved to Bangalore. Welcome, Prashant, uh, who's right now the head of product at JAR, a startup in Bangalore. Again, VCs were responsible for his Were movement. VCs responsible? No. No <laughs> VC was involved in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I moved to Bangalore on my own accord, yeah. Life happened in the sense like uh, after college, I got my first set of job in uh, Delhi. Hmm. So one thing led to another and I stayed there more than I intended and planned to say. Hmm. But yeah, and all the opportunities were pretty interesting from Spice to Paytm. And I in between, I did my own startup, which we sold to Paytm. So that way... Uh, Good time. I, roughly 15 years I stayed there. Nice. So we are going to expect you, Prashant, to be the strongest defender of Delhi over here. So we will talk about that as the... Wait, don't count me out. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to you <laughs> next. Okay, that that's my third uh, guest and my co-host, Rohin. So Rohin is interesting because Rohin considers himself and tells us that he's actually from Delhi. He spent his entire childhood in Delhi. That, that almost sounds like you're <laughs> alleging it. It is true. <laughs> it's <laughs> true. But he's also co-founded uh, the Ken and worked in Bangalore for a while. So, Rohan, how do you consider yourself? How do you see yourself on which side of the debate? I grew up in Delhi. <laughs> I spent the first 17 years of my life in Delhi. I left Delhi in 94. Hmm. Never went back. Hmm. <laughs> and I've been in Bangalore since 2001. So, nice. uh, people who meet me, uh, my good friends, when we get together, tell me, you sound like a Delhiite, yeah. and everyone knows what that <laughs> means, <laughs> right? But I consider myself a true Bangalorean, nice. and yeah, so I'm maybe neutral on this issue, I don't know, or maybe pro-Bangalore, I don't know, we'll see as the this thing, uh, podcast the zeal continues. of a new convert. Zeal of a new convert. But <laughs> if there are listeners here who are from Bangalore who think that this is going to be biased from the beginning, let me say no, because I am here. I am Praveen Gopal Krishnan, your other co-host of 2x2, and I am from Bangalore, I have studied in Bangalore, I have always worked in Bangalore, and I am going to, until my last breath on this episode, defend Bangalore against all of these three other people over here. Welcome to 2x2. Uh, this is our podcast where we discuss strategy, where we discuss 
interesting things about what's happening inside business and technology inside India. And our way how we describe this podcast is we think of it as your own personal brain. So I have my own personal brain. You have your own personal brain, <laughs> but let's get started. Um, I think the first thing I want to talk about before we get into whether this is happening, what's happening with Bangalore, etc. is please let's talk about Delhi for a little bit. And I asked this question to all three of you, but specifically Arnav Prashant, jump in here. What is it like to run companies inside Delhi? What is it that makes them fundamentally different? What's the historical context of startups and companies inside Delhi? How did that evolve? How did that change? Give it give a perspective about that to people like me who have never worked in Delhi, who have never seen what it's like to work inside a Delhi startup. What makes it different? What makes it special? What are your observations? You want to go first? Uh, maybe you do because you have... Yeah. Okay, see, to put it in a historical context, you have to see that Delhi per se has not been blessed by a very robust generational technology talent mm. in the sense like there was no infosys from where you can pick up somebody with a 10 year of work x right all the talent which you got was mostly from companies who are more operational or infrastructural company like airtel you know okay. or uh, maybe make my trip and all mm. like, you know and where essentially job was with all due respect but job was less of a development more of a system integration things okay so the people True builder probably were not there in pure coding sense. Hmm. What we have there is essentially people who are very good at system integration, people who are very good at operational stuff, and which is essentially, for some weird reason, is not appreciated as much at this part of the world. Hmm. We're speaking of Bangalore, and because this, oh, this is ops. Hmm. But even if you look at the biggest company like Amazon and all, the operational excellence is one of the core value. Yeah. You know, so... It, and if you look at all the... And technology stack per se was not very evolved hmm. back then. You know, the, in terms of credit card gateways and things like that were not evolved. So if you look at initially companies like Baba Bajar, some people might not remember. It's the first grocery company. Long really? Before, yeah, Baba Bajar was the first grocery company to come out of India. Then there was another company called... India Mart hmm. and all. they and they, ask me also ask me yeah they, they were to deliver ask yeah. me come very late this uh-huh. Malaysian company but like if you look at all the first batch of companies were from Delhi because hmm. the challenge was mostly system integration and bringing it here hmm. you know now over a period of time when you require those geographic centric customization that's where probably. Uh, Delhi start losing its edge and all. So yeah, we can double click and expand on this. But the real thing is, we never had that kind of abundance of talent. You know, so once a company <coughs> become mature, yes, you can bring some people back to Delhi and all. Another thing is with, I basically somewhere disagree with the core premise of this discussion, essentially that uh, companies are, startups are fundamentally probabilistic and diverse. So uh, how much a specific location can play a part of it, especially when you're saying that companies going after Bangalore market and this actually now companies are going after Bangalore talent pool. It's not the market which matters. And in that sense, uh, it's mayhem. Nice. I, I like it when guests come in and fundamentally disagree with the premise. Now, another member of Bangalore's talent pool. <laughs> Arnav, <laughs> what's it like? What are Delhi like? Uh, so, I mean, I, uh, you know, started, you know, trying to build a company and, you know, in the startup ecospace in um, Delhi, probably like a decade after the kind of time Prashant's talking about. Mm. Uh, and I think my primary flavor out of this Delhi versus Bangalore thing and you know I used to travel to Bangalore a lot because there were all the tech conferences used to happen in Bangalore and I used to give talks at them and you know this has geek used to do so many of these conferences here and I used to love coming there um, and it was kind of like you know go to Bangalore and, and you know talk to the people and see what's new happening and you know um, talk about cutting edge technology find somebody building a cool app and all of that stuff but go back and put your head down and build what you're building in, back in Delhi uh, and, uh, you know, there were friends of mine who were also building stuff out of Delhi and I saw that very similar thing, like, you know, if people were in 
in, in, in especially in the finance side, fintech kind of small companies are building. They would go to Mumbai. Uh, there used to be some events and all in Mumbai and all. And then you go back to Delhi and you build and you kind of focus. And I think my uh, primary flavor of the whole thing was that Delhi was a lot less, you know, distracting to you when once you have actually started building the stuff. Um, it uh, you know Delhi is not a place where uh, you know you can easily network a lot, find out what's new happening, all of that whole serendipity where a bunch of college folks they suddenly figure out oh these five people who are my roommates are also people with whom I can start a company. That stuff happens less there for sure. Um, you know, and if you're like raising uh, funds as a startup, all of my friends who have done that, I've seen them like travel extensively out of Delhi to do that like red eye flights every day kind of stuff and yet uh, one of the uh, things was like you know when there's the phase when you're focusing on building uh, like Delhi startups I've seen like there's a lot less distraction it's hard to hire the talent but once the talent is in they don't leave quickly so that way I think there, there's always been like a very different way of how uh, startups operate. Uh, I think slowly, slowly, a lot of uh, startups, especially in, in Gurgaon and the cyber hub around that place, that place is starting to become a bit like Bangalore now, though. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah. a good way? <laughs> I mean... Uh, yeah. In all ways, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, so I have an outside in sort of perspective to this because I keep traveling to... Well, fair disclosure, we do run a Bangalore startup. Even if you consider something approaching eight years, not technically a startup, but hey, I mean, in India, everything is a startup till at some point it doesn't. But every time I go to Delhi um, and I meet founders there and I go to the offices in Delhi, I think that the vibe and the buzz has been very different from Bangalore. It's hard to explain, but, and I've seen this happen over, for example, right after the pandemic, right? Let's say six months or a year after the pandemic, when I'd go, offices were already buzzing. Right? I mean, if you, like Zomato, etc., asked employees to come back in very quickly, most others. And during that time, if you remember Bangalore, it was a struggle because, again, like offices were largely empty and people were like, should we be coming in? Is this the end of work altogether? Will we be moving to a fully five days a week work from... So there was a lot of that intellectualization happening. So Arnav, from what you say, right, that lack of destruction, oh, sorry, distraction, my bad, I see the the mirror opposite of that, which is the, the presence of focus, right? <clears throat> and for me, it was always like, like what the two of you seem to be alluding, it was getting things done. Whatever it takes, get it done. So when I go to those offices, I see them buzzing with people. And, and typically when I'm waiting, I mean, I'm maybe stereotyping, but each of these, right? I see the conversations that are happening between people. I mean, typically, as a journalist, we're just trained to observe and listen to what we call color, right? What are people standing near the reception talking about? What are people standing for a smoke break talking about? What are people exiting and entering lifts? What's the buzz like and stuff like that, right? And for me, it was always very different. I mean, it, it sort of alludes to what you're saying, right? Somebody's talking about, hey, we got to call that person up and get that deal signed. Or, hey, we got to meet that person and he's asking for so-and-so commissions and we got to get that done. That was one set of conversations. And then off late, when I start to travel now, I think the conversation has become much different now. And it's, like you say, maybe you're alluding to it, it's become much more post-IPO conversations. Who's living where? Which number house is he or she buying in which Gurgaon community? What car has someone bought? So you can see that, like, you know, that change shift in the conversations. But it's all a dhanda conversation at some level. And I feel like, you know, Prashant, I'm, I'm sure you also have this historical perspective. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say, Delhi has always been this very dhanda business sort of this thing, right? Like, you know, like we said that Bangalore had Infosys as a tech business. But the other way to look at it is that Bangalore had this services and jobs and professional oriented culture. And Delhi always had this business oriented culture. A lot of people in Delhi run their own businesses. I mean, Delhi is essentially a, a city made by refugees who started their own businesses. And it's really infused into this thing, get stuff done. You make money, you reinvest it, you become bigger, etc. And stuff like that. And I see that just reflecting in the general attitude of 
people who work there as well right they're like yeah i mean you got to get this done you make more you become whatever like richer wealthier you bake a house etc that was never so much there in bangalore right we were kind of chilled and relaxed and like you know you got a good like somebody make some money the other person is thinking i'll maybe get like a invest in an uber cab and like you know like, well how did that go <laughs> right but as at least this is like i said it's popish it's stereotypical but i see this very much because i go as a bangalore founder and i see the you know the the buzz and the vibe and it's very different from bangalore this is a audio podcast so listeners cannot see the look of intense skepticism on prashant's face wait a minute face. i thought that was appreciation <laughs> i thought that was appreciation so i don't prashant, know what you're smoking <laughs> jump in no as the thing is in stats we have something called a principal variable so you are conflating a principal variable which is not essentially the culture or something it's a leverage please, please explain to our listeners i mean sometime we at this kind of confuse uh, what is causing what phenomena in the sense like you know cor- correlation and correlation causation correlation is not causation, causation. Yeah. fair enough so uh fact that delhi people came out uh, to return to office very early i don't think it has anything to do with uh the joy of work or like uh, loving to see their colleagues around i didn't say joy of work mm. i said they were there they were there and in bangalore and they were, they were, there were not there they have very little leverage when it comes to co- competing offers yeah yeah that's you i, know, I, I 100% in, agree and i was actually about to interject saying that yeah. that it was like the the founders and the and the execs and like the bosses hmm. of delhi like you know bring your ass to office tomorrow and you have to bring your ass to office Isn't tomorrow is that focus no no it's not That's focus because in delhi nobody will give a counter offer saying okay you can do the same thing at uh, so my question to you is that what use is that counter offer if we are discussing bangalore startups who are lagging behind delhi startups today in what respect lagging behind? i mean we are talking about companies that have essentially managed to make the jump to ipo we are saying that yeah, bangalore are, startups again, have not you are not, extrapolating right? two different variables here yeah. one essentially why did people came back f- sooner to office in delhi because if they don't there's no other company allowing them to very few companies were allowing them to is work from home is it a good home. thing or a bad thing you you seem to be implying it's a bad thing i'm saying there is very little given a chance people would have continued working from home they didn't have the leverage to negotiate with no, the I get that, they were also Bangalore. discussing what is the forcing function that is causing startups to succeed at scale maybe one of the forcing functions is founders who don't give again i'm yeah, i mean i think I mean, people think are locked in and many people are locked in the there the gitlab so. recently uh, faced a hard time and they are the pioneers of like uh, remote work and documentation and everything so i don't think a certain practice guarantees success cuz if you're work from home or work I, I don't do office. over index on work from office but i was saying that as one of the things that i saw mm-hmm. right i also said that the conversations were always much more businessy so there's another and thing there was a, i'll tell you yeah please there is a lot of people in bangalore startups who are in leadership or just the layer below leadership who have uh, big tech backgrounds hmm. um okay uh, by that you mean what amazon microsoft that yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. thing because yeah. such companies don't exist in delhi right uh, and and over the last 20 years a lot of you know i mean bangalore is a verb on the dictionary like you know, if you look at the history in that sense uh, these global development centers whatever outsourcing in fancy names okay <laughs> what that means is like a lot of uh, big offices with like 5000 10000 uh, people of a lot of large us companies exist in bangalore they have come up in the last 20 years when you want to when you're starting to sort of scale and you know go from a 10 member engineering team to 100 member okay now i need an adult in the room who will kind of you know do like set up an engineering team the proper way just go and hire somebody from amazon hire somebody nobody is fired for hiring vp of engineering from amazon that's like just look around bangalore every startup has a vp of engineering from amazon like, somebody will bring in structure and all of that um i mean that's the stereotype but is there's a lot of leadership which is ex big tech right um there's also culture imbibed as a result of that which is like you know they're they're not the kind of people who are going to be the first to say hey bring your ass to office tomorrow you know hmm. uh so delhi founders are not like that absolutely so my point is like i i think we're discussing here what makes delhi and bangalore different right again without saying that every founder needs to re- ask 
every every employee <laughs> so, so to I'm come five days. Prashant on that, that hmm. you know, people went because they had to. I mean, there's there's not I mean, much Wingify optionality. Wingify has gone fully remote. It's a, one of the pioneers. No, but Wingify started. is the biggest outlier of Delhi. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. not a Delhi but, company. Like, somebody was talking about statistical outliers. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a, it's no, a no, super but outlier. Again, it's like a Pune see, company. So what he is saying? <laughs> oh, we have another podcast today. Yeah. Okay. So. See, what happens is because of this big tech influence, people who have experience and the kind of people who will not ask to come office tomorrow, no matter what your conditions are, on a very abstract level, what it means is how work is done, what work needs to be done. So in Delhi, you can say, yeah, if there's one criticism I will concede is, as long as it gets done, people in Delhi somewhat don't care how it is getting done. The craft per mm. se is undervalued there. Got you it. know. Are you writing the release notes? Are mm. you uh, commenting the code? Is Results there a, first whatever approach. variable nomenclature? Mm. Outcome over yeah. process. Outcome. Got it. You know, it's been always and like that. Now the thing is, when there is an outcome over process, hmm. uh, then the people dependency increases because now there is no documentation. You can't hedge against the person. He will leave. he will stay there for 5 years hmm. and that has secondary consequences which are more political in nature in the <laughs> sense like that, like now if you see the average tenure is very high like somebody who is in delhi and all because somebody who is probably might not working out is staying there for like 3 years why because the damn thing is not documented nobody else understands the code base okay that's interesting now i'll just you jump know, from delhi so finish up just to finish. yeah yeah go yeah, for it. so when this appreciation hmm. of craft comes hmm. into the picture hmm. you do more iteration hmm. you approach the whole thing in a very systemic way hmm. and that's why you see the number of iteration which you see in swiggy you know they are still at it like for multiple time like instamart and this and that there are multiple iteration in delhi and some other places uh, it's like you try throw some spaghetti on the wall chala to chala otherwise but that's why blinkit and zepto are beating swiggy's ass because the pro- procedural problem has been solved by zepto which is a bombay company by the way uh, i mean it's only, it's only headquartered out of from what we were just uh, talking about it bangalore now they're no, all affected no, no, the, the, the first they started in bombay i mean that's okay, like that's calling phone pay a singapore company because they happen no, no, to be no, no, registered that's, there that's, right so what i'm saying is if you look at the innovation and if you def- define innovation not as a proce- like process innovation operational innovation look at housing the design renesha was brought in by them look at let's, let's talk about companies that exist today yeah, yeah. <laughs> and are not <laughs> scammy Zepto, companies Zepto, uh, they brought in the innovative uh, yeah. black store model you look at mpl uh the dream 11 and all they are all bombay companies so can we extract no, no, by sorry, one sorry, simple but, data but set? from what i and like zepto did not bring in the dark store model right the dark store model was brought i mean if anything then you can that, say that it's swiggy by that logic se- everything else was pre existed no, no but bombay companies do have a very different thing i mean we are talking yeah, no, we, we can get to bombay but i want to i want to go to bombay as well but let's just finish Delhi, right? So We're the done craft, with Delhi. The respect for craft is more here. Okay, great. So let's start then, right? So respect for I, craft. I want to say something in Hindi about <laughs> respect. Me <nahi> craft. आप रख लो. बाकी हम सब ने मतलब IPO कर लिया है, right? So ultimately, we have to. I mean, we are talking about one of the biggest criticisms about startups is that they keep burning VC money. At some point, they got to grow up, do IPOs, become profitable. And on that, so if you are saying. at the smaller level you're saying delhi startups get stuff done they throw spaghetti at the wall they push code out they see what works at scale it seems to be the data is undeniable that it's a delhi startups that have taken the public route very few bangalore startups so what I mean, my counterpoint is what is the point of having really beautiful release notes if your delhi counterparts are beating your ass on market share and ipoing hold Now on that note, let's just jump into Bangalore a little bit, right? We have spoken about Delhi. We have spoken about what makes it special, what does not. Hi, this is Rohan. This week, the free version of our podcast, the one that you're listening to right now, is only thirty minutes long. The full version is seventy plus minutes and available exclusively via the Ken's app to our premium subscribers. Now you have two choices. You could either subscribe to the Ken to continue listening to full episodes of Two by Two, or stay a free subscriber. We value your time regardless. For instance, you can read a story version of this episode on the Ken's website this Friday for free. 
also as free subscribers you can also expect some really cool additional offerings coming your way starting the first week of September see you next week